Did the fires from the jet fuel melt the steel? The Federal Emergency Management Agency, FEMA, estimates that about 3,500 gallons of jet fuel was burnt at each tower. We will assume that the jet fuel was injected into just one floor of the World Trade Center that the jet fuel burnt with perfect efficiency and oxygen was available at the precise ratio, that no hot gases left this floor by motion, convection, conduction, or radiation, that the steel and concrete had an unlimited amount of time to absorb all the heat, that the heat distribution is symmetrical and even along the entire floor. With these ideal assumptions, we will calculate the maximum temperatures that the materials of this one floor could have possibly reached. We'll assume the most efficient chemical reaction. This is the hydrocarbon and the oxygen and the byproducts are carbon dioxide and water vapor and this has a net calorific value of 42 megajoules per kilogram. The heat energy produced in the reaction is used up to heat both the byproducts of the chemical reaction plus the concrete and the steel of the floor. The nitrogen in the air is a spectator, however it absorbs heat because it's mixed up with the oxygen. The molar ratio for air is here, 1 to 3.76, mainly nitrogen. This is the chemical reaction with the air. It incorporates the nitrogen. And as you see, the byproducts are water vapor, carbon dioxide, and nitrogen. So this is the hydrocarbon, and these are the products. The ratio of the hydrocarbon to the byproducts is here, in moles. We need to convert this to kilograms, or mass. We use the famous equation, the moles, equals the mass divided by the molar mass where the molar mass of hydrogen is 1 the molar mass of carbon is 12 the molar mass of nitrogen is 14 and for the oxygen it's 16 it comes out to be this when we change it to empirical form so the mass of the products when 3,500 gallons of kerosene is burnt, the 3,500 gallons equals 10,850 kilograms. So by proportion, we work out how much byproducts uh, that would give. So this is 34,100 uh, carbon dioxide and 13,949 uh, water vapor and 122,388 kilograms of nitrogen gas, N2. Don't forget that each floor had 550,000 kilograms of structural steel and 1,400,000 and 28,300 kilograms of concrete ceiling and floor slabs so all the heat from the reaction will be used up to raise the temperatures of the following materials from atmospheric temperature which is assumed at 25 celsius to a temperature T degrees celsius the first one is to raise 13,949 kilograms of water vapor to T degrees Celsius. The second one to raise 34,100 kilograms of carbon dioxide gas to T degrees Celsius. 
The third one, 122,388 kilograms of nitrogen gas to T degrees Celsius. The fourth one, 550,000 kilograms of structural steel to T degrees Celsius. And the fifth one is to raise 1,428,300 kilograms of concrete to T degrees Celsius. This table shows the heat capacity of the substances to be heated. Here are the substances and here is the heat capacity in joules per kilogram Celsius. So the total energy that will be used to raise all these substances to T degrees Celsius is given by the equation E equals MC delta T where M is the total mass of the substance to be heated and C is the specific heat capacity of the substance and delta T is the rise in the temperature in that substance. Assuming that the atmospheric temperature as we mentioned before is 25 delta T would be T minus 25 degrees Celsius. The total energy used to heat the water vapor would equal 13,949 multiplied by the heat capacity of the water, which is 1,690 multiplied by delta T, T minus 25. And the same will go for the other materials with their specific heat capacities and their mass. So the energy that is used to heat these substances all comes from the energy available from the burning of the 3,500 gallons or the 10,850 kilograms of jet fuel with a calorific value of 44 million joules per kilogram. This means that the total available energy in the 10,850 kilograms of jet fuel is 10,850 multiplied by 44 million joules per kilogram equals 4.774 times 10 to the 11 joules. So this is the total energy that's available from the fuel. And here we have the total energy that is needed to heat up all of these substances to T degrees Celsius. So now we can equate this 4.774 times 10 to the 11 with these and solve T and that will give us the temperature that it could be raised having in mind that the source of the energy is the energy available in the jet fuel so here we see 4.774 times 10 to the 11 equals the energy is needed to heat all the five substances here add it together solve for T it comes out 329 degrees Celsius so the maximum temperature that these five substances could have reached with our assumptions is 329 degrees Celsius. This temperature is nowhere near the temperature needed to start weakening or melting the steel as the steel needs at least a temperature of 600 degrees Celsius to start losing its mechanical properties. If we assume that the fire was contained in only one half of the floor then only one half of that floor would melt and therefore it would have tipped and not fall symmetrically so we eliminate this assumption if we assume that the fire spread throughout two floors instead and do the same calculations then the maximum temperature that could have been reached would be 186 degrees Celsius.